The faro is a method of interleaving cards together in a smooth and satisfying fashion. Or you know, at least that's the definition I came up with. When I first saw the pharaoh, I thought it was no big deal, right? You're just pushing cards together. So what? And then I tried it myself. Okay, here we go. Gonna pharaoh. This is the one. <sighs> Unless you've tried it, you have no idea how hard it is to not do the pharaoh once you know how to do the pharaoh. It's like trying to unsee the matrix when you know it's there. Like, it's, you, can, you can't. But I'm sure many of you watching this video are well past the phase of learning the pharaoh because, you know, this video is about what we're gonna do once we know the pharaoh. So, but if you need a quick rundown, I got you. So this is how the pharaoh works. You're first gonna grab a deck of playing cards, hold it in an elevated straddle grip, looking something like this. Index finger on top, middle ring finger on the side, pinky on bottom, and thumb on the opposite side. Now you're gonna come over with your dominant hand, split this packet approximately in half or as close to half as you possibly can. Once you've done that, you're gonna slide this down like this. And now what I like to do is kind of tap these uh, decks together just like this so that I can ensure that these cards are square. And as I'm tapping, I kind of angle this packet a small amount. So instead of it being completely flat like this, I angle it just a little bit like this. Hopefully you can see a difference. I think this will help clarify. Usually it looks like this. And after I angle it, it looks a little bit angled as you can see here. So once that's been established, the packets have been square, this has been angled a little bit. You wanna hold the packets pretty tightly in your hands. The uh, non-dominant hand is gonna be holding the top packet, so you have your thumb on this side, your ring pinky finger close to the bottom here, middle finger right there, and index finger on top. And the bottom packet, I'm gonna have my thumb on this side. Notice how the deck is face down here, and I'm holding the uh, cards facing, the faces of the cards are facing the palm of my hand. Whereas in this case, with my dominant hand, the palm of my hand is facing the back of these playing cards. And as far as the grip goes down here, my pinky finger's on the bottom, thumb on the side, middle and ring finger on this side, and my index finger is just on top, dangling it about. So again, we're gonna get to that position, tap, and now you wanna hold these edges pretty close to each other. So this part right here and this part right here. What I like to do is I hold them close like this, I like to let one or two cards fall off the side from here. So I usually let one card go down like this, let me see if I can show you an example. It's a little difficult on camera, but you can see how I have one card just uh, kind of below everything else over there. Now, once I get that one card below, right, this card right here, once I get that below, then I kind of start pushing these packets together at an angle like this. Notice how it's not completely straight like this, but a bit at an angle. If it's completely straight, uh, you can push them together like this, but you'll see that some cards have not been farrowed together. Now, if you approach it at an angled view, you can see the house cards are starting to interleave together. And now to kind of help ease this process, if it's one of your first times doing the Pharaoh, you can kind of shift the cards back and forth a little bit, like just like how I'm doing here. And you'll see the cards fare together pretty nicely. And that's the basic tutorial on the Pharaoh. Now I do have a full video on it that you can check out. I'll put the link to it on the screen. And uh, yeah, check it out if you need to. So you know how to Pharaoh cards. You must think you're hot stuff. Well, you are. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five awesome moves that you can do with the Pharaoh. Let's do it. We'll start nice and easy. One of the most basic things you can do with the deck of playing cards is fan them out. So we'll start off nice and simple with the Pharaoh fan. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. When you split the packet in half and you're about to Pharaoh the cards together, for the Pharaoh fan, you wanna ensure that one packet has more cards than the other packet because that one packet is gonna envelop the other packet. So it's gonna have a card on top and a card on the bottom. Let me show you what I mean. So let's Pharaoh away right here. And of course I messed up a little bit. All right, but here you can see I have one card on top and I have one card on bottom and it's both coming from this bottom packet that I have over here. Now, when I push the cards in, I would say I push them in about one fourth of the deck, right? Not a whole lot, not like two thirds, halfway. Pushing them in about one fourth. And now you're gonna hold the deck in a fanning position. If you already know how to do the card fan, you can probably just do it from here. But a quick tutorial on the fan is I like to take my dominant hand, these two fingers out like this, put it on the bottom of uh, the bottom packet. Thumb goes on the other side, holding about the center. And you can see I have a decent grip like this. Now I'm gonna come over with my non-dominant hand. I tilt this packet a little bit, so I push this over with my thumb like this. These fingers kind of help guide that push. And then I continue pushing with my thumb and forming uh, with my uh, non-dominant hand here until it looks something like that. And there you have the fan of the pharaohs. 
One of the things that I recently discovered was the double bridge riffle shuffle. And I actually discovered it while practicing a false riffle shuffle, which if you want to check out, I'll put the link to it on the screen. But what do you need to execute the double bridge riffle shuffle correctly? Well, that's a, that's a mouthful. Double bridge, riffle shuffle, double bridge, riffle shuffle, double bridge, riffle shuffle. You need to know how to do the pharaoh. All right, the double bridge riffle shuffle. Of course, first things first, you wanna pharaoh the playing cards together. And this is gonna be very similar to a normal riffle shuffle with the bridge that you do just like this, except there's a small modification to it. What you're gonna do is pharaoh the cards as per the usual. So pharaoh away, boom, just like this push the cards in about the same amount you would do for a normal bridge. Now, what I like to do is I like to grab this part with my thumb like this, just because I don't know, I find it much easier, but you wanna be applying pressure to this corner and this corner. So here's how I hold it. I take my dominant hand, come to this top right hand corner. I put uh, these playing cards right here where my finger meets the palm of my hand, put that right there. Same thing on the bottom left-hand side, come over just like this. And again, like I said, I'm holding the card here. And now I'm gonna apply pressure towards the center with both these fingers. So what that's gonna do is misalign the cards, something like that. So you can see now the cards are misaligned. Of course, this is not perfect, but nobody is, it's okay. So the point is you see the cards are misaligned. All you have to do now is shift this over a little bit, come over with your dominant hand, non-dominant hand, whatever you wanna do hold the cards this way. And now you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna do a bridge. So loosen your grip once you're holding on tightly and you'll see the cards kind of uh, bridge together. Now that was horrible. Let me do that one more time. So of course, first things first, we're gonna hit it with that nice little pharaoh. Once the cards have been pharaoh, we're gonna do the bridge. Sometimes cards fall, that's okay. And now we're gonna come over, do the second bridge. And there we have it. The double bridge riffle shuffle. I first saw Friffle and Cascade performed on a random video on Instagram many years back. I was like, whoa, that looks so cool. So I went on over to YouTube and learned it from one of the kings of cardistry, Oliver Sogard. And what did I need to know to perform this move? That's right, the Pharaoh. Here we go, Friffle and Cascade. First things first, gonna wanna Pharaoh those playing cards together, push them in maybe about one fourth, uh, one fourth of the way. You wanna make sure uh, that one packet envelops the other packet, similar to the fan that we went through. So I have one card on top here, uh, the same in one packet, the one card on the bottom in the same packet. Now, of course you want this to be facing you like this, and you should be able to hold the cards like this. Thumb on one side, uh, middle finger on the other side, and your index finger kind of curled in here. And you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna be able to riffle these playing cards. You're gonna riffle somewhat or something like this. So as you're riffling these playing cards, watch what happens. If I start riffling, they kind of just fall out at a, I would say 90 degree angle, which is pretty cool. So that move right there is known as friffle. It's like a riffle with an F. Now you're gonna be doing this friffle onto your pinky finger. So the long side, or actually let's say uh, this corner here is gonna go between your pinky finger and your ring finger. So that's how the cards will be friffled. Let's go through that one more time. You do the pharaoh, um, and then you do the friffle. And you can see how it's kind of moved right into there. What's gonna happen now is you're gonna get these cards in a 90 degree angle and push these cards in. Now you don't wanna push it in too deep. I'd say push it in that much. So as you can see, they're at a 90 degree angle. Uh, I'd say they're pushed in, again, maybe about a fourth. We're just gonna go with fourths this whole video. All right, so you've done that, you've done that. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna come over with your index finger, move it between these two packets here. Your thumb is gonna go here. So your grip is gonna look something like this. Uh, of course, this uh, packet is in my non-dominant hand. So thumb here, let's, uh, let's say this is the friffled packet, right? We did this. So pinky on the bottom of the friffled packet. Um, on the front of the friffled packet, the long side front, we have the ring finger, middle finger. In between, we have the index finger. And on the opposite side, we have the thumb on the short end. What's gonna happen now is you're gonna position this downwards, right? So you want this to be facing down and you're gonna release with the index finger. Let's just see what happens. If you release with the index finger, keep everything else exactly the same. You see the cards actually cascade down. And that's one of the reasons I love this move so much 
is because really the friffle, really not too difficult to do. Pushing the cards in, not too difficult to do. Getting into the grip, not too difficult to do. And just moving your uh, index finger out of the way like that. Oh, I'm gonna let the cards fall. Literally just moving your index finger out of the way like that and the cards start cascading. Again, you just wanna make sure that it's at a right angle. All these fingers are pretty tight, right? They're in place pretty tightly, like the deck will not move around if I shake it. And if I literally just let go, you'll see the cards will cascade. Now, of course, in terms of playing around with the length of the cascade, that will require, uh, I guess, a bit more practice. You'll wanna see how you position your hands and whatnot, but I think this is an excellent starting point to learn the friffle and cascade. Bloom was literally one of the most elegant moves that I have ever seen. It literally reminded me of a flower just opening up and blooming. It was amazing. And the crazy part is I learned it right here on my YouTube channel live. If you want to check that out, bam, I got you. You already know what you need to know, so let's learn Bloom. Bloom is a move by Zach Mueller, and actually, fun fact, I did not learn this move by watching a tutorial. I just saw someone do it online, and that's pretty much how I figured it out. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some of my insights and uh, hopefully make it much easier for you to learn. So of course, you're gonna start off by doing the Pharaoh. I have pretty much ruined these playing cards at this point. You're gonna start off doing the Pharaoh, throw those cards together. Uh, you wanna make sure, I messed up right at the end where I needed. You wanna make sure that on the right hand side or the side closer to your dominant hand, you have the one card on top and the card or the side closer to your uh, non-dominant hand you have the one card on the bottom, right? So this is gonna be the front side. This is gonna be the back side. Now you're gonna push this in, I would say pretty deep in. Let me, let's figure out the distance once I push it in. So I push it in maybe about this much, right? So the cards overlap is a decent amount, like that much overlap. What you're gonna do now is this bottom packet where there's no overlap, you're gonna grab with your thumb and middle finger like so. Your index finger is gonna come here to help guide the playing cards. And the top part you're gonna got, uh, you're gonna grab with your index finger and thumb. Index finger is gonna go up front like this. Thumb is gonna go in the back again, the non-intersection, uh, non-intersecting portion. From here, you're gonna pull out. Oh, uh, not pull out. Sorry, you're gonna go down with with this hand. Right, this hand's gonna go down. This hand's gonna go down as well. So both hands are going down. Of course, my non-dominant hand is palm down. My dominant hand is palm up. So I'm pulling out just like this until I get to, let's say about this angle. So maybe a 45 degree angle, right? With these playing cards. And now I square them up on the bottom. So you can see originally there was some space here on the bottom. I use my index finger to kind of push those together like this. And same deal here. I use my ring finger, middle finger to kind of push these in so that it's kind of uh, flattened on the bottom or as compressed on the bottom as possible. Or on top, we're left with uh, the cards almost, um, well, you know, with a decent amount of space between them. Once you're in this position, you're going to start loosening your grip with your thumb, uh, middle finger, and thumb and index finger. Uh, I use these fingers here on the bottom to kind of help guide, and same with these fingers. They're going to come down here, uh, the ring finger, pinky finger here, and the ring finger, middle finger here, and they just kind of help to guide. So you want to make sure that they're intersecting, uh, intersecting along the same area and now loosen your grip. And as soon as you loosen your grip, you'll see the cards uh, move out a little bit. It's not gonna be a whole lot, just a small amount like this. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna loosen your grip even more, right? So you're gonna slowly loosen and tighten that grip until you kind of reach uh, this point, right? So I, what you're seeing me doing is, the reason why it's so choppy is because I'm loosening and tightening my grip. And this is a great way to start because it lets you know almost what level of control you need in order to make these cards bloom right now of course this isn't a huge amount of blooming but it's it's a say uh, it's a starting point i can't i can't talk today so i want to get into that one more time uh push those cards in like this like this once you get comfortable doing that separation try just completely loosening and seeing how far you can go uh by having the cards uh kind of come to a stop now you may feel like uh, the cards are gonna fall out at some point, like here. I've kind of loosened my grip here with a thumb too much. Uh, the card there is kind of starting to fall out. But you're gonna get a sense of what you can do and what you can't do. And the better you get with this, uh, 
it, it's almost like a knack, honestly. I wish I could say apply this much pressure, don't apply that much pressure. But you'll see the more that you do this move, the better that you'll get with it. And you'll be doing this in no time. This right here is one of the greatest moves I have ever observed in my life. If you thought that first cascade was good, you would need to check out and learn the V cascade. I first saw it on the Verts YouTube channel and there was no tutorial for it. So I ended up learning it live here on my YouTube channel. I do a lot of learning on here. It was no easy task learning that move, but now I'm gonna share with you the secrets to the V cascade. The V cascade has to be one of my top three favorite moves I've literally learned all year. So let's just uh, dive right in. Of course, first you wanna start by farrowing the deck together, push it in about one fourth of the way. That's just pretty much been the theme this whole time. You're gonna come over with your dominant hand, grab the farrowed cards like so. Thumb on one side, make sure it can touch the bottom of the pile. Pinky finger on the other side. Again, also make sure it can touch the bottom of the pile. These three fingers, index, middle, and ring finger curled in, looking something like this. Let me show you the grip at a glance, just like that. Now that we have this grip established, let's talk about your non-dominant hand. So your non-dominant hand is gonna kind of be catching the cards in a cupped shape like this. So it's almost gonna be like a U and a cupped shape like this. So the cards are gonna land in a V shape in your hand um, over here. So let's just quickly walk through now the, I guess, technique behind how we accomplish this. So like I mentioned, you're holding the cards like this and you're gonna be catching like this. So first I like to start off by just index finger thumb, holding these cards here, preventing them from falling. And in the motion when you're letting them fall, of course you release that grip and push down in a consistent and uh, I would say almost slow way when releasing these playing cards. Now here is the biggest mistake I made when first learning this. When I first learned this, I moved uh, this packet here, the pack with the playing cards, moved it from here to here because that's what I'm used to doing, right? When you do the dribble, for example, in the dribble, you're moving this packet, right? In the spring, you're moving this packet. So it's very natural to come and move this packet, but that is counterintuitive to what we're doing with the V Cascade. With the V Cascade, uh, once we get set up with that again, with the V Cascade, what we'll be doing is we're gonna have this packet be stationary while the hand that is receiving the playing cards, that'll be moving in the downward direction. So let's just go through a quick run through. Let's do this together here. I'm just gonna have my hand very close so that you can see um, how the cards should be falling and how they should be received. Also, it's a good way to initially start practicing because um, as you get better and better, increase the distance and it'll be a lot easier of a learning process instead of having to pick up the cards every single time because my God, that, that was a struggle for me. So here we are, let go. And you can see the cards fell in a V cascade shape and uh, it's a V here in the grab. Now, one thing that for some reason did not happen this time, which is a good thing, uh, a lot of the times the cards mesh together when you're first learning this move. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about. If you don't um, release fast enough here, right? So let's say we're here and we're doing this, right? So, oh man, these cards keep on working. Okay, but a lot of the times the cards don't mesh together properly and they end up like this here. So instead of going on one side of the V, they kind of end here. And that's because as you're releasing these playing cards, it's easy for these fingers to kind of push those playing cards in. So let me show you one more time what I'm talking about. So we're here, just observe what these two fingers are doing, right? So as these cards are falling, you can see that these two fingers are kind of coming inwards. That helps with the cascade, but at the same time, it pushes these cards together, making them mesh in. So at smaller distances, those uh, that packet could end up being horizontal instead of vertical uh, in that V shape that we're looking for. So really just a key few things to note is when you're doing this move, uh, you wanna start off at a small distance, make sure you're pushing down here and keeping this hand stationary while letting this hand drop lower. And of course, of course they fail. Never look at the camera when doing this move. It just always never works. As I was saying before my cards rudely decided to fall, start with short distances, keep this stationary, push down and uh, again, short distance, increase as you get better. Of course, the card will fall because I'm on camera, but you'll get there. I have zero doubt in your abilities. There you have it, five awesome things that you can do with the Pharaoh. And let me tell you, if you learn any one of these moves, you'll be able to impress like anyone, anyone.
Feel free to like, subscribe, and share if you liked this video. As always, it was a pleasure having you here. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day ahead, and I'll see you, hopefully, in that video.